compounds having two carbonyl groups separated by an intervening carbon are called beta dicarbonyl compounds. In another video, we have discussed the acidity of the alpha carbon, and that will be of importance for the synthesis of other substances such as ketones and carboxylic acids. The acidity of the alpha carbon that is flung between two carbonyls allows the easy deprotonation to form an enolate that can later be used as a nucleophile as an easy method to create carbon-carbon single bond. In this video, we are going to use a beta keto ester to make a ketone and a malonic ester to make a carboxylic acid, we will discuss the mechanisms for both. The reaction whereby a carboxylic acid loses CO2 is called decarboxylation. Beta keto acids decarboxylate readily when they are heated to 100 or 150 degrees, and some of them decarboxylate slowly at room temperature. When a carboxylate ion decarboxylates, it forms a resonance stabilized enolate anion. When the acid decarboxylates, it will go through a six member cyclic transition state and is going to produce an enol that automerizes to a ketone. Hydrolysis of malonic esters will produce dicarboxylic acid that can decarboxylate to produce a carboxylic acid. Hydrolysis of beta keto esters will produce beta keto acids that decarboxylate to ketones. The steps on the synthesis of carboxylic acids or ketones using the beta dicarbonyl compound method is first the protonation of the alpha carbon between the two carbonyl groups by use of a base. Second step is an alkylation by use of an alkyl halide going through an SN2 mechanism. And the last step is the decarboxylation using a small amount of acid and heating to 100 to 150 degrees. The acetoacetic ester synthesis and the malonic ester synthesis are reactions of high percent yield due to the stability of the enolate. The enolate form is stabilized by resonance we will have that the negative charge on the alpha carbon is the localized between two oxygens. The sp3 carbon has become sp2 carbons and these two electrons we can push towards this oxygen and an equivalent resonance structure will be formed when we push these two electrons from the alpha carbon to this oxygen. Observe that all three resonance structures have the same negative charge. The alkylation of the enolate will go through an SN2 mechanism. Better alkyl halides for the reactions are benzylic, allylic, and primary alkyl halides. Recall that in the SN2 mechanism, the nucleophile approaches the carbon bearing the leaving group from the backside, that is, from the opposite side of the leaving group. The end result is a brand new carbon-carbon bond between what was the alkyl halide and the alpha carbon of the dicarbonyl compound. The next step is the hydrolysis of the ester group to produce one carboxylic acid group. This carboxylic acid will undergo decarboxylation to produce a ketone. The protonation of malonic ester forms a relatively stable enolate ion. This is similar to the previously discussed with the synthesis of ketones from the acetoacetic ester. The enolate can be also alkylated and decarboxylated to produce a carboxylic acid. We can do monoalkylation or double alkylation of the alpha carbon. The fact is that the monoalkylated 
compound still has an alpha hydrogen that is acidic that can be removed with another base. The alkyl groups no necessarily need to be the same. You can use two different alkyl groups because the reaction can be controlled. And the process repeats by doing a second alkylation of the new enolate form. Similar to the acetoacetic ester, now we do the hydrolysis and the decarboxylation to produce a carboxylic acid. Decarboxylation is an exothermic process. It not necessarily means that it's easy for all different carboxylic acids. Special groups usually have to be present in the molecule for decarboxylation to be rapid enough to be synthetically useful. That is the case of beta-keto acids. When the acid itself decarboxylates, it can do so through a six-member cyclic transition state. The hydrogen from the carboxylic acid group can make a hydrogen bond with the beta-carbonyl. This will allow a rapid proton transfer that triggers the release of carbon dioxide. The product is the enol of the acid that automerizes to a carboxylic acid. This is a useful method to make clean carboxylic acids. The only thing that is required is to distill the byproduct solvent ethanol.